Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum and we're going to be doing on-chain analysis. Hopefully you didn't think that I would only be doing on-chain analysis for Bitcoin, because in fact, the cryptocurrency asset class is a lot bigger than just Bitcoin. And most notably, we will be talking about on-chain analysis for Ethereum as well. Specifically in this video, we're going to be looking at trends and wallet sizes. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Now, we did this analysis for Bitcoin. If you want to see that analysis, I would encourage you to go watch that video on my YouTube channel. This video, we're going to be doing the same type of analysis, but for Ethereum. The purpose of this video is to generally just look at how do trends and wallet sizes go for Ethereum throughout the various market cycles. And what we're going to do is we're going to step through this metric and look at different amounts of Ethereum per wallet. Now, I should mention that it is easy for market participants to potentially manipulate this data, especially if someone were to buy, say, 100 ETH. If someone bought 100 ETH and then sent one ETH to 100 different wallets, it might appear that you might have 100 different people that are, are now own one ETH each, where in fact, uh, it was just one person spreading it out over 100 different wallets. So with that disclaimer, let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing we're looking at is the number of unique Ethereum addresses with at least 0 0.001 ETH or 1 1,000th 1, of an ETH. Obviously, that's not that much. Uh, at today's Ethereum, at, at, at the price of ETH today, you can see Ethereum is trading for just around $3,000. So 1 1,000th 1, 1, 1, of that would be approximately $3. So... Uh, this metric, I'm not sure how serious it should be taken, but one of the things you do know is that at this local top in May, we actually saw this come down a lot, but then during this one, it hasn't. And one of the things I've been thinking about recently with all this stuff is it kind of seems to me that there is this mania phase that lasted through the last part of 2020 and early 2021 that brought a lot of new retail investors in. But the retail investors that were going to leave, I think, have probably already left the ones that were going to leave. If you're still here watching this video in January of 2022, then you're, I mean, I hate to break it to you, but you're probably here for the long term, okay? <laughs> you're probably here for the long term at this point. And I think one of the reasons is because that the, the, the market participants who are going to capitulate and then leave on the first dip uh, are, are likely not those serious investors anyways. The people that have stuck around so far are, 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 probably, are probably capable of handling the volatility a little bit more. And believe me, not everyone can handle it. And by the way, that's not a bad thing, okay? It's not a bad thing. This market is just simply not for everyone. And, and that's simply not a bad thing if, if people don't want that type of volatility. But what you can see is that there is a, a, a fairly sizable drop here in the number of addresses holding at least one one thousandth of an ETH going from a peak of approximately 36 and a half million all the way down to you know around 34 34 million or so so it dropped a couple million uh during that time but now it's it's actually steadily going back up and even even though we've been dropping recently you can see that this drop has actually still led to the number of ethereum addresses holding at least 0 0.001 eth has actually been going up okay does that mean that ethereum can't drop in price no i mean it, of course it could there's I mean, here it was going up for a while, even during the downtrend. But what it shows is that the, the investors that are still here today are the ones that are more likely in it for the long haul, not the ones that are here to make a quick buck. Um, uh, if we go to 0.01 ETH, you see a somewhat of a similar trend, but it's not as pronounced. All right. So there was a little bit of a sell off here at this local top back in May of 21. Um, but most recently tiny tiny bit of sell-off here too but it's still going up it's still going higher we look at 0.1 eth uh this is wallets with at least 0.1 eth in their wallet you can see interest kind of an interesting story in fact because after the after the market cycle top of 2018 2017 2018 we basically just went flat here for a couple of years and then we started trending up in in 2020 and then in, in, in early 2021, we really started trending higher. We went flat here in, in the first half of 2021, but since then we've just been going up again, okay? So, I mean, there is a distinct difference between, say, 
this phase over here when it was going sideways, and then this phase where it's still going up despite the fact that that the that the prices have been going down. And I, again, I think a lot of people use on-chain analysis to to confirm, say, a, a specific bias one way or another. Again, it does not mean that that we can't see further downside. I need to clear. I need to make sure I reiterate that. If the order books are thin, and and you just have a, a you know a few investors coming in, and, and they offset a lot or they offload a lot of Ethereum, if they offload a lot of ETH, of course the price can go down. But what it does show is that, I mean, the network is growing, right? I mean, more and more people are are holding Ethereum theoretically speaking, unless it's just a lot of actors creating a lot of different addresses, but you can at least see that there are some slight differences in, in what happened after this pullback earlier in, in 2021 and then the most recent one. If we go look at, at a wallet to hold at least one ETH, what you'll notice is that um, it was a, fa a fairly nice uptrend here coming out of the, of the, uh, the March 2020 capitulation and then a fairly nice drop off here in December of 2020. And, and after that, we got, I mean, we sort of got back on course you know, this period right here, this drop off, it's funny because it, it actually corresponded to right before the the breakout that Ethereum had against Bitcoin and the US dollar as we got into January. So it's almost like a lot of people lost faith in Ethereum at, at just the wrong time. And then it and then it started moving higher. Um, and then since then, we can see that it's actually leveled off a little bit here. OK, I mean, over the last over the last, say, three weeks or so, it's it's in a local uptrend. But you could argue that it's more or less been the same for about two months in terms of the number of addresses holding at least one ETH. Addresses holding at least 10 ETH in a steady uptrend. By the way, one thing we should mention, that as we get into the larger amounts of Ethereum, of, of, of Ether, I should say, you should remember that it's going to become harder and harder for people to get that. So it's not that, you know, when, when we're talking about say, you know, 0.1 ETH, there's just more people in the world that could theoretically get it if they just decided they wanted to get it. Okay, not everyone, right? And, and, and of course, it, it goes up, right? 0.001 ETH, you just need $3 of Ethereum. Okay, it's a lot easier to get that if someone decided they wanted to get it. To get 10 ETH, even if someone wanted to get it, it's not necessarily that easy to get with the prices at $3,000. That means that someone would have to have $30,000 or so just to get 10 ETH. But if we look at this trend, you can see it was in a fairly nice uptrend going up until the end of 2020 and then went into a downtrend going into what you guess you could argue as, as this local distribution phase uh, or even long consolidation phase between 2 and 4K. And then and then it was basically just been going sideways ever since. OK, so it hasn't it hasn't really done a whole lot ever since in terms of the number of wallets holding at least 10 Ethereum, 10 Ether. 100 ETH. Pretty steady uptrend into into the summer of 2020, and then it's it actually pulled back significantly during this uptrend, and now it's leveled off for for quite a while. So you could argue that that this metric of of showing at least 100 ETH in a wallet has more or less flatlined since the summer of 2021, and and, I'm, and my guess is it's going to continue to stay relatively flat for a little while. If, if we see more downside, then maybe you'll see it tick back up if, if some larger investors come back in and, and pick some up. If we just go up from here, then I'm still not sure that you would see this metric go up considerably in the short term, just because there are still going to be a lot of investors that are that are spooked by the current market conditions and are going to be somewhat uh, wary of, of, of the current market conditions. If you look at, at addresses holding at least 1,000 Ether, Fairly flat in 2019, 2020, okay? A downtrend into this uptrend, which makes sense, right? That the guys that accumulated, you know, the, the guys that, that were getting Ethereum earlier on were, were offloading it over here. I mean, it could have been people that got it as far back as over here, potentially. Uh, but they certainly were offloading it during this move up, the, during this run up. And then ever since, you know, basically ever since the summer, the number of addresses holding at least 1,000 Ether has been flat. Okay, 10,000 ETH. Not a whole lot of interesting stuff here. It's actually interesting when you look at, at 10,000 ETH versus 1,000 ETH because 1,000 ETH, at least 1,000 ETH wallets have actually been trending down and then sideways. Wallets holding at least 10,000 ETH were going down over here and then actually up during the uptrend. So maybe this is, is reminiscent or resembling or, or showing, alluding to the idea that, you know, Perhaps some larger investors finally started taking cryptocurrency seriously 
in 2021 and decided to just grab a position. Um, since then, you can see that it flatlined in the summer and actually it's actually been in a slight decline uh, in, in the fourth quarter of 2021. We'll see what happens as we get into Q, as we continue on in Q1 of 2022. Now, at this point, we're talking potentially about, you know, exchange addresses, uh, that kind of stuff when you're dealing with 100,000 Ether. So I'm not really sure that anyone should be necessarily taking this to the bank, uh, but you can see that it is in a local downtrend, right? Um, but it's actually been in a local downtrend since March, essentially, of 2020. And I think one of the reasons you could argue for these downtrends is just that in March of 2020, the price of Ethereum was 100 bucks. So even for large entities that wanted to purchase Ethereum, they could get a lot more Ether for their money back then than they could today. I mean, if, you, if it's only trading for 100 bucks, it's, I mean, it only takes $1,000 to get 10 of them. To get 10 of them now, it takes $30,000. So it's going to be a lot harder, obviously, for these larger entities to get these larger amounts of Ethereum, but a larger amounts of Ether. But even here, you can see that there's only about 152 addresses uh, that have at least 100,000 Ether in them. And then finally, if we look at, at addresses with at least 1 million ETH, you can see that uh, we're, we're at about seven, okay? Um, so it... it, 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 it I mean, you can see that it's, it's a step. I mean, it's basically either six, eight, or if it's in the middle, it's sitting at seven. Uh, so we went all the way up to, to 12 <laughs> back in May of 21. And then we've since come back down to seven uh, during the current times. Anyways, I hope, hopefully you guys enjoy the, the on-chain analysis. I know it's a different, different pace than what we normally look at on the channel. But I wanted to, I was trying to think of ways that we could expand this channel in 2022. And I thought one of the best ways was to was to venture out and start talking about some on-chain metrics and and see what we have to work with. And, and you can see that we'll be talking about them for a lot of different cryptocurrencies. I mean, we're not going to go through all of these, but these are the ones at least that I uh, might cover. OK, if you guys like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel. If you guys want access to this, we do have into the cryptoverse.com. You'll get access to a whole lot more than just this. Make sure you check it out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe, click the bell icon to turn on notifications and I'll see you next time. Bye.